What is up, everyone? Welcome to Hi-Fi Turtle, where we talk about everything audiophile. Today, I'm talking about a vintage component that I have owned for quite some time now. This is the Sony DVP S9000 ES. It is from their upper echelon line of products, the ES series, but this is from the early 2000s, 2001 to be specific. It is a CD player. It's something that I've talked about before in my actually my most popular video of all time when I talked about getting into CDs. This made an appearance and it is still my reference CD player. Before we continue, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It helps the channel grow. Check the links below in the description for other ways to help support the channel, including joining my Patreon where you can see a bunch of behind the scenes and additional thoughts on components as they come into my room. Really appreciate your support. Let's get back to the video. Now, of course, if you dabble in any audiophile community, you'll know that there is a very hotly contested new versus vintage mindset. What is better? Is the olden days of audio better than these new components that are coming out every few years? Did they get it right in the 80s and we're just repeating ourselves now in the 2020s? Who knows? But I think while the vintage community is very strong when it comes to vintage speakers, vintage amplifiers, vintage preamplifiers, and of course, vintage turntables, what is not highly regarded in the vintage community is vintage DACs. And even in the audio community, it seems like buying a very high-end DAC can be a risky proposition value-wise, and the future value of that DAC is likely to decrease very much so because these companies that make the chips for these DACs are always developing new and greater chips. And as soon as that new chipset comes out, if you have your DAC with the old chipset, it's going to look like, you know, last year's iPhone. People are kind of like, yeah, it's still good, but I want the latest and greatest. So, you know, that's going to come down in value quite a bit because there is this new hot chip that's out there. But back to the subject at hand, the Sony DVP S9000 ES. And while I'm talking about this as a CD player, the reality is that this component is actually marketed more so as a DVD player, but it is a full-fledged CD player and also SACD player. What is an SACD? It's a super audio CD. You don't see these very frequently anymore and they're kind of a niche product in the early 2000s anyway, but a super audio CD is supposed to be a higher resolution than your typical CD. Instead of the PCM format 16-bit 44.1 sampling frequency, you have a one bit depth and something like 2.6 megahertz sampling frequency, which is supposed to contain much more audio data than your standard CD. Now, to be frank with you, even though I have a CD collection, I actually don't have any SACDs. And from what I've read online, the SACD portion of this player is usually the first thing to go. So while again, I don't have any SACDs myself, and I don't know if my player will actually play them. I got this player used. On the used market, the fair value is about 300, maybe $400 in really pristine condition. I was really lucky and I got mine for $60 cash from a local sale, so I feel really excellent about that. This player, again, is from the Sony ES line, which is the upper echelon of Sony's offerings. And in 2001, it retailed for 1,500 US dollars, which in today's dollars is around 3,000 or so. So this was a pretty high-end component for back in the day. Again, while this is also a DVD player, I haven't tried to play a DVD player. This channel is really not about TVs and visual media. So I'm going to bypass all the talking about the features when it comes to the DVD portion of this DVD player and focus solely on the CD aspects and the quality of the built-in DAC. For a component from 2001, I have to say that the Sony 9000ES is a beautifully constructed component. It feels really premium. And there's a lot of things going on with this where I can scratch my head and say, why aren't other high-end manufacturers doing this with their components? For example, the chassis is made of a hybrid aluminum and copper. Why copper? Well, copper blocks out EMI radiation, radio waves, things of that nature, essentially making this thing a Faraday cage around it to prevent that noise from the outside world getting in. It's really built to that high specification. And you look at a lot of high-end audio components that are solely built from aluminum or something like that, it makes you kind of scratch your head and be like, why aren't they doing that? Another cool thing on the chassis is that the vents 
actually have dust filters. And being someone who's kind of into the PC gaming world, of course, every high-end PC has dust filters to prevent all that dust from coming in because you have a lot of fans. Now, there's no fans on this CD player, but again, I'm kind of thinking, why don't other high-end audio companies have dust filters on their vents? Obviously, you know, we play them, they get hot, the dust is supposed to come out from that heat, but the dust filters are a really nice touch and again, makes me think, why did Sony do this in the early 2000s, but today's high-end audiophile manufacturers that are charging tens, maybe even hundreds of thousands of dollars, don't do that. It's just a, such an easy little thing and I think that it's, in, again, a very thoughtful design process from Sony. Again, I got this thing used, so there are some cosmetic issues. The play button has actually fallen off and requires the remote or the use of a paperclip to actually press the play button. The CD tray is a little finicky sometimes. Sometimes when you hit eject, you can hear the internals start to click around, but then the CD actually does not eject. It takes maybe two or three times, but that's kind of here and there. And then besides that, there's really no issues I've ever had when it comes to playback, skipping, any sort of other noise, things of that nature. It's always been a solidly built component. Even with the CD spinning internally, I really cannot hear that noise coming from the player. It's well internally damped. And again, it is just built very, very solidly. There are a lot of customizations that you can do to the player itself. A lot of those do surround the video portion of this, but there are some portions of this, including a recalibration of the laser for the CDs in case your CDs aren't playing right, that is only available via a video display menu from the player. So if you do buy this thing or find one used or something like that, check the video output and see the settings and see if you can recalibrate the laser or do some other sort of troubleshooting. Again, that's only available when it's connected to a screen. So how does a CD player from 2001 stack up against the modern, ultra sharp, new chip design DACs of today? For comparisons, I use the Benchmark DAC 3B that has the ESS Sabre 9028 Pro chip in it, and then the Electro Compagnie ECM Mark II, which has a Cirrus Logic Master chip in it, I think in a balanced configuration as well. I think there's two of them in there. So these are much newer chips, much more exotic and laid out chips than what was certainly available to Sony in 2001. And I have to say, I would not be making this video if I didn't think that it was a compelling offering, that it could compete extremely well. And again, for something that I've seen fair used value, depending on condition, between $300 and $400 is such a steal compared to the $2,000 benchmark and the nearly $7,000 Electro Compagnie. Granted, there is no modern streaming, no compatibility with Spotify and Cobas and Tidal and all that good stuff. You can't plug in a bunch of other stuff. There's no balance. There are certainly a lot of limitations when it comes to the features of this CD player. The sound quality is actually impressively good. I don't find it noisy. I think the background is extremely quiet, a very black background, again, considering the age of this device. And the overall tonality of the device is very compelling. The only knock I can give it is that I do feel like there are some semblances at times with very treble heavy songs or treble heavy parts of a particular song and that the transients do seem at times a little harsh compared to the more sharp and toned versions coming from the Benchmark DAC 3 or the more finessed and laid back and smooth of the Electro Compagnie ECM. But besides that, vocals are still very layered. The sound stage is very deep. The imaging is impressive. The mid-range is very luscious. The bass goes deep. I don't feel like I was missing any 
base versus the other components. And actually, there may have been slightly more base coming from the Sony versus the other DACs in the stack. There are certain limitations with this player that you don't have with these modern DACs. And the primary one being that you cannot plug anything external and just start streaming your music. You are going to be limited to listening to whatever is in your CD collection. So if you're a very avid CD collector or have a CD collection that you just never have given away or gotten rid of, then yeah, this may be something that you can really step into that high-end space with, with not a lot of coin, honestly. But if you're someone who doesn't have a collection or is just really into streaming, then yeah, then buying a traditional DAC with a streamer or a com combination of the two in one chassis is gonna probably work out better for you. But again, I truly believe that CDs are starting to make this kind of resurgence. Maybe not to the extent of vinyl, of course, you know, there's lots of vinyl variants and things of that nature that are coming back and you see the headlines that are coming out. But there is still this true and time-honored tradition of buying CDs, this nostalgia people have for CDs, or people that just never left the format in the first place. And I think that that's evidenced in that a lot of my local record stores are starting to advertise that they're stocking CDs again, which is very interesting. And I don't know what numbers they're seeing. I don't know what data that they're seeing in order to take that on instead of just purely selling vinyl, but something's going on. And I think that if you want to really invest and get into that CD world, this is a tremendous piece, a great piece, a fantastically built piece that will last you through the ages and certainly you know from my experience has lasted me quite a few years at this point has great sound quality looks great has a lot of features if you do want to play dvds if you're like that nostalgic and you have a lot of dvds again this is only going to output in 480p which i guess is the standard for dvds but only with uh rca inputs not the uh HDMI and things of that nature that we're, we're used to in the more modern area. And I don't think most TVs these days even have those, you know, RCA, uh, you know, video right left inputs anymore. So there you have it, the Sony DVP S9000 ES. It's quite a mouthful. Sony is known for making those mouthful names for their components. It is a great player. Again, it has the not only the option for that internal DAC, but also to act as a CD transport. So if you do want to use an external DAC, if you do have a really high-end DAC like I do, then yeah, you can absolutely output that as well. But then you can change it up and input from the built-in DAC, which as I've said, is absolutely no slouch, sounds great, has a different flavor to it. And you might be surprised when you find out, hey, I'm gonna to listen to on the high-end DAC or I'm gonna to listen to the built-in CD DAC. It's definitely different options that you can play with and having those different flavors. That spice is the variety of life, right? Appreciate you watching. Again, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. It really helps support the channel. You can also support the channel with the links below in the description, including the link to my Patreon. I hope that you consider supporting the page so that this channel can continue to grow and get better. And as always, I will see you in the next one.